One of the most basic tools in SOLIDWORKS, indeed in any design or drawing software, is the selection tool. You have a mouse and you have a pointer. You point to something and click on it to select it as the target of some subsequent command or action. Seems pretty simple. But there are a number of variations, modifiers, and hotkeys available in SOLIDWORKS selection to make tedious jobs much easier if you know these tools exist and how to use them. That's the whole idea of this five-part series. Select exactly what you want, exactly when you want it, and do it quickly. From 2D sketches to massive assemblies, there are SOLIDWORKS selection tools and techniques that we can use to make our job much easier. Let's take a look at some of these tips and tricks right now. When working with SOLIDWORKS parts, there are a number of things we can do to make selection of exactly what we want in the model geometry easier and quicker. First thing to know is whatever command you're in, if you hit the escape key, that's going to drop that command and give you the basic selection tool. To use a selection tool, I just move my cursor over some bit of my geometry and SOLIDWORKS will light up and indicate what I'm hovering over. In this case, I'm hovering over that edge of that boss extrude. I want to select it. I just go ahead and click and it is selected. Whenever I want to drop my selection, I click in the background and nothing will be selected. Now let's move over some more geometry and I go ahead and hover over this face. I click on that face. Now that face is selected. I zoom in a little closer here. I see I can go ahead and also directly click on and select vertices. Something new in SOLIDWORKS 2022 is the ability to hover over a cylindrical face and not only have that cylindrical face light up as something I could click on to select, but you'll also notice that the axis of that face will also light up and go ahead if I want to and select that item as well. You can select on more than one thing by holding down your control key. So if I want to select a number of faces on here, just go ahead and click on this face, hold on my control key as I select other faces, and they are all selected together. You can also do a basic box selection if you want to. In SOLIDWORKS parts, it doesn't matter if I go left to right or right to left, the box selection is always going to give me what's completely inside of the selection area, in this case, these edges here. Also, in SOLIDWORKS, when you do area selections, you're going to be selecting edges, not faces or vertices, but specifically edges. And we'll talk about how we can modify that later on. If I right-click over geometry, I get some selection options as well. So for example, I can select tangency. In the case of a face here, like the cylindrical face, I select tangency and all the faces that are tangent to that face that I've selected are going to be selected as well. And you can use the control key to do a multi-select with this as well. So if I wanna right click on this face with my control key held down and select tangency, I can go ahead and get all those faces inside there as well. Now, once you have something selected on your part geometry, you can right click in the white space and get the selection toolbar up without having to worry about accidentally selecting something else. I like to do that. Once I selected the geometry, I'd like to go to the white space and continue on if I'm going to modify that selection with the selection commands we have here. So we can switch from a box to a lasso if we want to. We'll do that later on. But here, I, what I want to do is I want to invert my selection, which is going to go ahead and invert my selection. So that initial cylindrical face and all the tangent faces were initially selected. Now I've inverted that. And one of the other things we can do in recent versions of SOLIDWORKS is we can save selections. So right click in the white space again here and go ahead and say, I want to save selection in what we call a selection set. Now I'm going to drop the selection. All those faces are now dropped, but I can easily get them anytime I want to because once you start saving selection sets, they appear in your feature tree in the selection sets folder and each one will have its own line in the tree underneath here. And one nice thing we can do, of course, in the tree is rename things. So I'm going to rename 
the selection set. Machine faces. And like I said, I can go ahead anytime I want and click on that selection set and all those items in the selection set, in this case, a bunch of faces, are going to be selected. And I can do whatever I want uh, action on those. So in this case here, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of these machine faces like so. If I go to an edge and right click, I can select the loop. Now loops are edge loops. And typically when you're in a, in a 3D model like this, there's gonna be at least two different edge loops you can select from. So in this case here, the initial loop is all the way along the outside edge against the cylindrical face. But if I click on the arrow key and change the direction of the loop, now we can see it's going to the loop on that face going kind of outward from the model. So I can go ahead and toggle between whichever loop I'm trying to select, or I can select in the background and drop my selection set altogether. Now, you can also just right click in space and get a number of the most typically used selection tools just on the heads up interaction menu here. So I can go, for example, from a box selection, I can toggle that to lasso if I want to. Again, same as the box selection, doesn't matter if I go clockwise, counterclockwise, crossing or not, we basically, there is no crossing select in parts when you're using the box or you're using the uh, lasso tool, the, whatever direction you go, it's always gonna be everything inside of the, the area you, you draw out, drag out is going to be what's selected. So no crossing select in parts, unlike in sketches, as you may have seen earlier. Now, if I want to select something other than edges, and I want to do that in bulk, one thing we can do is make use of the selection filters. Now, selection filters, you can bring up on the F5 key, but you can also just right click in here and get access to the whole selection filter drop down right here. So there are a number of things we can potentially select in a 3D model for parts. I can select midpoints of things, or I can select any kind of symbols or axes or whatever, a surface or solid bodies, but these are the most typical things you want to filter for. And each of these is individually toggleable on and off. Now that includes vertices, edges, and faces. Faces is the one I use most often uh, because edges are kind of automatically there again if I'm doing an area select with a box, which is what I usually use. So if I switch this now and I say, I'm going to turn on a filter to filter faces, now, as I do my area select of the box or a lasso, I'm getting just faces. Now we can go ahead and again combine that with individual click selections with the control key held down. So I'm gonna go ahead and control select these other faces. Again, notice that I don't have edges popping up or anything. I just have faces because that's what I'm filtering for. Now, if you've ever kind of clicked through or made a selection and accidentally hit a key on your keyboard, like escape, or you clicked in the background and you drop that selection. Again, recent versions of SOLIDWORKS have a remedy for you. I can just right click again here and I can use previous selection. So whatever selection I got, whatever, however I created that with area selections or with just a bunch of control clicks or a combination, whatever, whenever I have a selection, I, the last selection that I created, I can always get back to without having to save it, I can just go ahead and say previous selection, very handy. For those situations, we accidentally drop your selection. Now, I will also mention that if you want to turn these filters off, you can either go into here and individually toggle them on or off, or you can use hotkeys. The hotkey for turning off or on the face selection filter is the letter X. So we'll go ahead and hit X and I will no longer have that filter turned on. Select other is up here. So you can start it this way if you want to. Most often when people start the select other option, it's gonna be a right click on some geometry and then do select other this way. If I'm trying to get some specific bit of geometry, but there's a lot of other things adjacent or behind, you can use this command 
to get exactly what you want. And you can even access through the geometry if you want to. So in this case here, I've used that to select this face all the way through my part. Now we also have a drop down. This is the exact same drop down that's at the top uh, row of the uh, user interface. But you know, instead of having a mouse up all the way up there, you can just right click and get access to this as well. So what do we have here? We have magnified selection. This will attach a magnifying glass, so to speak, um, to my cursor wherever I go. So if I wanna select a couple things, like I'll control select these three small faces, I can do that without zooming in and zooming out a lot. This will continue to be attached to my cursor until I go back up to the menu and turn it off or toggle it off with the letter G as in glass to do that. Come back here, the selection drop down here. Here you can see we can go another place where you can toggle between setting lasso selection and box selection mode. And we also have another option here. This is really important in part modeling, I think, to know about, which is select over geometry. Now, without this, if I want to drag a rectangle, say I want to just grab what the geometry here, okay, like these edges and all this stuff here. I'd start, because I don't want to start up here in the white space because I'm going to grab a bunch of other things. I want to start dragging right here. But as I try that, I can't because that face is a selectable face. So it's thinking, Falk is thinking, I'm trying to click on that face. So what select over geometry does, you turn on and it stays active until you complete your selection that you're doing. And I can now hover over this and start dragging, and it's not going to think that I'm trying to click on the face behind it. So there I went ahead and just dragged that area, and I selected all those edges. Of course, I select edges behind here, too. you got to watch your ZDAV. You might have to be a little creative with rotating first, or, again, maybe uh, you wanted to grab some extra geometry there. Now, you can combine these things if you want to as well. So I'm going to use the X key which is again, the hot key to toggle on the selection filter for faces. And I'm going to use the T as in top, if you will, which is the toggle for select over geometry. So I'll go ahead and, and invoke that. And now I can go ahead very easily and very quickly grab just those faces for that area of my model. I'll go ahead and hit the letter X to toggle off the face selection filter. Now we also have a couple other things, power select and select all. Select all, kind of self-explanatory, pretty universal uh, in Windows programs in general. Select all will select everything in, again, in a SOLIDWORKS part model, it's gonna be everything in the part model. In terms of edges, because again, by default, when you do mass selection, whether an area select, or in this case, I'll select all, it's going to select edges. Now, what if I don't want that? Again, this is where your handy dandy X key comes in. So again, you can use the letter V as in vertex to filter just vertex selection. You can use the letter E as an edge to filter just edge selection, which again, kind of the default for your area selections anyway. But again, I use X a lot. Hit X. Now I know I'm looking for faces only. And if I hit Control A, which is the universal Windows program shortcut for select all, now I selected all, but all means all faces in my model. Go ahead and toggle that off. Finally, I wanna call your attention to the Power Select tool. This could be a video by itself. The Power Select tool is a very handy tool. A lot of people don't realize it's even there. What this allows you to do is it allows you in a part to be very specific as to what you pick. Uh, it's basically like a search. So in this case, I want, I'm not gonna filter out just features or just edges, just loops separately here. What I am going to do is I'm going to look at the parameters and filters up here. So I can do certain things. In this case here, feature type is usually what I end up doing. And you can see here, I can go through all kinds of bosses, if it's an extruder or a vault or a law thing, be very, very granular here. It's very useful to be able to grab weldment bodies in here, 
or mirror parts or reference geometry. In this case here, I'm going to do a more specific feature. Again, I can go through a bunch of things. I can select all the holes, I can select all the cavities, etc. I'm going to select all the fillets and rounds. And you basically set this up and then you say search. And it will go ahead in your model and find all the items that match your search criteria. In this case, a bunch of fillets. In fact, all the fillets in my model. Now, to make this take effect as a selection, you use the close button. Don't hit cancel because it'll drop what you just did. Hit close. Now those are all selected. You can see they're selected graphics area and the feature manager tree on the left hand side. And you can do whatever you want to do with them. In this case here, I'm going to suppress all those to make a simplified part very quickly. I could, of course, say this is a configuration. And this is a very easy way to, for example, grab all the fillets in your part and suppress them for whatever reason you want. I hope you've learned some new aspect of SOLIDWORKS selection that'll help you in your next project. Make sure to watch all the other videos in this five part deep dive series on SOLIDWORKS selection tools and techniques. And feel free to like and share these on social media. As always, contact GSC for any questions, comments, or for more information. See you next time.